Hello. Are you ready to paint a watercolor painting with me today? If so, get your brushes and paints and let's go paint along. Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. I've been off the air for a while. I've been relocating my house and my studio. So uh, this is my first video I'm making in my new studio. I hope you uh, like it. I hope everything works okay. Everything's newly set up and uh, so I hope I don't have any glitches. Anyway, uh, we're going to do a watercolor today for my nephew uh, has a couple of dogs that are very beautiful, very cute. They're uh, I call them puppies. They're a little older than puppies, but uh, uh, I just like the pictures that I've gotten and I'm going to try to do a, a watercolor of these two white dogs in on white paper. So uh, we're going to see if uh, how that works today and I hope you like it. I'll show you what I, how I started this uh, very briefly here. Um, I have my Kindle and so I actually have, uh, I'll zoom in so you can actually see the what I started with, I started with a couple of photos. There's a photo of one uh, Westie called Cody, and uh, there's a photo of Barkley. He's a Lhasa, Opsa, and then I took those and used Photoshop to take the background out of them, so I actually have them on white background here. Um, there's Cody, and so I put them together in a sketch, and uh, I don't know if you can see it that well on the, the Kindle here, but uh, I have it on, on the board, I'll show you in a second. And uh, so I've done a rough draft of that already, so there's what we're going to try to paint today. So I hope you uh, like the subject matter, and I hope I can do it justice again on video. I did work at it kind of hard to try to get the uh, white to work on white paper, and uh, so uh, we'll, we'll try that today. So uh, I was, should tell you that we're uh, painting on uh, Fabriano Artistico 300 pound cold press paper, 11 by 15 in size. And uh, I have my sketch already on here as you can now see. Um, I think I'm lined up so you can see the whole sketch. Um, let me go through the brushes very quickly and the paints. Uh, they're very similar, same as really what I've been using a lot of. I have my Sterling Edwards uh, palette. I have my Sterling Edwards set of brushes. I have a couple of large bristle brushes, a medium and a small. I have a one inch flat brush. I have a quarter inch flat brush. And uh, I'm sorry, that's a half inch flat brush, not a quarter. Um, and then I have a couple of rounds. I have a number eight and a number four. I have a little script liner that I've added from American Painter. So I don't think I'm gonna use all those brushes. When I did the sample, I only used the number eight round. Uh, so I'll see if I need any other brushes. I may need one of these brushes. I'm going to put a little background in this to kind of tone it down a little bit. The white's almost too white. Uh, so I'll probably put a little background around it. Uh, the, the paints, let's go through the paints very quickly. Um, uh, I have them usually on the front end of this video. I have a, or I'll put them on a scrolling um, screen as I go through them. Uh, we have neutral tint. These are my Mary Blue transparent watercolors. Neutral tint. Cyan Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Violet, Crimson Lake, Garnet Lake, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Golden Lake, which is very similar to uh, Raw Sienna, a couple of yellows, Primary Yellow and uh, or Limon Yellow here first and then Primary Yellow. The uh, inside row here I have uh, Burnt Umber, Sap Green, Auvignon Orange, Primary Red Magenta, and Still to Grain Brown. I also have a little bit of light red here left in my palette that I don't use that too much. It's a Grumbacher paint <clears throat> and uh, I don't have much use for it. Uh, this painting when I did the uh, demonstration or the first pass, I only used Neutral Tint, Ultra Blue, um, Burnt Sienna, and Primary Red Magenta. I only used four colors for this. 
So uh, I think that's probably all I'm going to use in this one. And uh, with uh, that being said, let's, uh, let's get going here and see if we can uh, make this thing happen. I think it's uh, <clears throat> going to be a fun painting. Painting somebody's uh, pets is uh, always a challenge because they know what they look like. And uh, if you can't get the likeness right, uh, it's usually a challenge. Uh, and uh, so everybody has their view of what, uh, what their pets look like and uh, you never know how it's going to come out. So I'm going to try just a little bit of this neutral tint. I'm going to, I'm not wetting the, the paper as I normally do. I'm going to take some neutral tint and just make myself a, myself some water in here, my palette, and uh, a little bit of neutral tint. And I'm just going to kind of touch the edges of this uh, to sort of get rid of some of the um, stark white here. I didn't do this on the, the sample, um, so I don't know how it's going to work out, but uh, we'll try to just tone it down a little bit so it's not quite so uh, stark. Just putting a mild gray tint on here with neutral tint. I stuck a little bit of blue in there a couple times. You might have seen me hit the palette with that. Um, very loose, very runny. Uh, maybe make this corner a little bit darker than the other corner. I don't know. Um, but let's just put some of this in here around there. There we go. Okay, so I'm using this brush from Sterling Edwards. It's a uh, one inch, it's called a small brush, but it's uh, basically a, a bristle brush, which not many painters, watercolors, you know, rarely find a watercolorist who uses uh, bristle brushes, but uh, I uh, kind of picked up on the uh, Sterling Edwards style and some of these things and uh, um, there we'll put a little shadow over here on Cody um, all right <clears throat> so we'll start with that get the uh, water from around the edges here um, okay all right what soft edges I don't want hard edges if I can keep from it this bristle brush is good to make hard edges soft. You can just touch the edge of it and it will just soften it right up. Yeah, so um, that's really all I want to do for that background. Uh, I think I'm going to get my uh, hair dryer out here and uh, dry that so I don't have any uh, loose runs running into it when I start putting some color on the the, the dogs here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to turn my microphone off so I don't blow yours out, and I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> should be back now. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's get going. Uh, these uh, these puppies, as I like to call them, have very dark eyes. They're almost uh, black. Uh, and in the photographs, if you notice the photographs, they, uh, they really are very dark um, with just some highlights from where the the light hit the pupils when the, the photograph was taken. So I'm going to start here. Let's first make sure the paper is dry. If you feel it with the back of your hand, if it feels room temperature or warm, um, it's dry. If it feels cold, it's still a little wet. Use the back of your hand instead of the front. You have more oils on the front of your fingers than you do the back. Um, it's a good way to test the uh, wetness of the paper. So I'm going back here and getting uh, some of this uh, neutral tint, which is 
Another name, very similar color, is called Payne's Gray. But we're going to start with the eyes. Go in here to do Barclay's eyes here. Now I may stop talking for a while when I'm doing this. Some of this takes a lot of concentration and I tend to not want to talk too much when I'm doing this right-brained activity here. So he has just a slight One eye. Try to do this other eye here. Now I'm looking at the photographs. Photographs can be slightly deceiving because they do mess with the values. Um, get some good idea for the values, but you have to. Uh, uh, the colors are usually pretty accurate, but the values tend to get grayed out. They have a uh, most of the comp the algorithms in the in the cameras tend to make these things um, average out the, the value so they're not exactly what you want but you can get a good idea if you do a black and white photo uh, you can usually get a good idea of the right values okay put in this little nose I'm actually going to leave couple of spots here with a highlight on them so that we see his nostrils. The photograph actually has it all blacked out but I'm not going to black it out. Round brush number eight round here. Okay and then we have we're going to have some a lot of little fine details come down into his his beard here, his little mustache. Okay. And then right below that, not very far, there's a lot of uh, dark hair below his mouth. All right. I don't know, but I've been told if you can get the eyes and nose and mouth of your pet pretty well <clears throat> done, fairly accurately, you kind of get the, the likeness there of them with the Cody has some almond shaped eyes more. This looks really dark and black right now, but it's uh, it's going to dry lighter. And over here, And he has a little black strip here above his nose and a little bit of a highlight right there. So, let's see if we can get this all done in here. Okay, I think we're getting the, at least those key parts of the, well, he's got a little bit of dark that comes down here, his little mouth is like right in here somewhere, kind of covered up with a lot of fur, something like this. All right. 
Now, all right, that's um, the photograph. They actually had little dog collars on, but uh, I took the dog collars off so I could just show their. Uh, a matter of fact, I still have them in the sketch here, um, and uh, I get my kneaded eraser here and uh, sort of rub those out, hopefully, so I don't have those lines going through there. They're not coming out very well. I did this sketch on tracing paper and then used the tracing paper to uh, copy it to this watercolor paper so that this is not pencil on here. This is uh, uh, graphite like from a transfer paper. So it's not coming off as well as I thought. But anyway, we'll try to do without those. All right, let's go back here and let's look at Barkley. I'm going to pick up a little of my uh, dark sienna here, or burnt sienna rather, burnt sienna. Um, you mix it with a little of your blues and your neutral tint and you'll start getting different shades of gray with a little bit of red in it. The, uh, so around the eyes here, we have a number of areas that are want it to be soft. Just sort of tickling this in here. Randy's eyes. Try to make the brush strokes go the way the the fur on his around his eyes go. I like to use my finger on some of these animal pictures. I don't know if you have watched the video of the little lion that I did, Cecil the lion. Uh, but I did a number of areas where I used my finger just to sort of get this rough texture. We have to leave some room for his, the white part of his beard to come down here. And then he has this sort of this reddish coloring that comes down. Something like that. On this side it comes down all the way down into here actually. It comes back up and follows his beard back up there. This is just uh, almost pure uh, burnt sienna. It's got a little bit of uh, dark in it, a little bit of uh, this neutral tint in it. So we had a mixture of dark and mixture of dark and um, neutral tint rather and uh, burnt sienna together here. This is all just really fine touching, just hitting it very easily, coming down. Pick up all the dark and mix in there a little bit, get some other coloring in there, some up here. So what I'm leaving with these fine brush strokes here, they're using this point of this number eight round, I'm leaving little white gaps there. And it's probably hard for you to see that, but um, what I'm leaving, it makes it look like that's the white part of the fur coming through. Um, and uh, the rest of this is uh, some of the dark coming out around it. OK. 
Okay, up here we have just a little bit of there. We have this kind of coming up in his forehead. Um, Notice my brush strokes. I'm going the way the fur flows. If so I can figure out which way the fur is going. Using my finger and a little finger painting here. So this is Okay, step back, take a look, see if I'm getting the, probably have a little too much in here, but one thing about Fabriano paper is that uh, you can lift some of these colors right up if you take a sort of a wet, damp brush and just wet them like this. They, tend to lighten up and come right off. Not completely, but if you use another brush or a paper towel or something, uh, you can tend to get them right, get them off the paper. Um, okay, up here we've got some tone. Not that color, but let's tone it down a little bit here. It has to be darker than the background or you're not going to see him. So I'm going to try to get this mixed in there very lightly. Lay it in. This is sort of the first first wash, if you will. I'm going to come back and maybe put a little more dark, some shadows in there to sort of highlight it. I want to try to leave certain areas white if I can. Uh, to represent the true whiteness of of his fur. It's really not perfectly white when I look at it closely, but um, this starts moving over this way a little more. Too dark, too dark. Lighten it up, get some clear water, and just sort of blend that in. Some more of this over here. Probably got pencil lines that are probably too dark in here. This uh, when I did the copy, I'm sure I made the lines too heavy, but I want you to be able to see it at least. Um, Lighten it up. A 
painting with my finger, painting with paper towel, painting with a brush. Um, it's all trying to make use of the tools we have available here. All right, we have some. more outlining of his mustache here. All right, I think I'm getting it a little better. Here, picking up some of my ultra blue, some of these shadow areas. Soften this off. I'm kind of pretending the light is coming kind of from the top left a little bit, getting some highlights on his head, kind of shadowing his neck here, if you can see that. Run that shadow down even a little further. Something like this, and then soften it up with paper towel or clear water. I put the brush on sideways and scrape it fast, I can get some hard edges, um, rough edges, but um, I can also do that with my finger, I can do that with a paper towel. A um, number of ways to get that type of texture. All right, what do we need to do here? Let's see, let's put a little more. a little bit of this here. It goes a long way. Okay, we're getting that kind of look that I'm hoping for. Throwing some reds in there. Have a little reds up in here even. Not really red, it's that uh, burnt sienna. A couple of reds over here. Let it sort of blend all right, I think I'm getting a close likeness. Um, the rest of him down here, we're going to just sort of put in a Highlight. Leaving the bottom all impressionistic, making it all sort of run together down here. Not uh, very distinct at all. Just a little tone on the paper. Let it run out. Over here on this side, we'll make it a little darker, maybe. If we can. Don't forget this is white on white, so you have to sort of use your imagination here with what these colors are, but um, all right, I think that's pretty close. Very fairly impressionistic, loose. Um, try to get the likeness in the eyes, nose, and mouth, and then uh, just hit the try to hit the shadows and the highlights. All right, let's see. I think probably put a little more dark in this area in here. A little bit. Bring back a little bit of this reddish brown in here. Some areas like that. A little bit over here on his back. 
Okay, just sort of let that blend in. Use your thumb, use your brush, use your paper towel, whatever. So that lets you see a little bit of his leg there being highlighted um, and falling into shadow here off into, off into the bottom of the page. All right, let's look at this other little puppy here. He's got similar colors. They're both white. Uh, but let's see here. Maybe we can do some work on his ear over here. Get that drawn in a little bit. It's a little too dark, I think, compared to make it soft on this outside edge, let it sort of blend with the background if we can. Gonna have a shadow on the inside of his ear. He actually has a little of the reddish color coming out here on him. He has a little bit of that magenta in there. That's why I was picking up that. I haven't used my magenta yet, but uh, put a little of that in here. His face has a little bit more Actually, you're taking two different photos and two different areas of the, of the house when I took these, so they have a little bit different uh, different coloring in them. So I'll pick up a little of that, just a little of that magenta. You see what that does? It just gives it a interesting color here. Throw a little of that blue back in it, right in here. Give some shadow, soft edges. Make this don't have a hard edge there. If you can keep from it, soft. Take water, soften that edge, and soften all this in here. This is all, since it's all furry, it should all be fairly soft. Oh, a little highlight for his nose there. Okay. other ear over here and see what we can do a little bit of a too dark again too dark this uh, and to force myself to do this white on white is uh, it's a bit of a fun challenge Just put him in there a little bit clear water Pull it down. These mirrors for the uh, there's a shadow in there that's fairly dark. Just a I think I'm put just a little bit of magenta back in here to sort of tie these together a little bit. I have harmony between these two not a lot but just a little okay what do we got here we got this nose coming around <clears throat>
All right, see I'm making a darker shadow more on this right side here. Again, it's sort of trying to highlight his where the light's coming from. Light's hitting on this side, so I want to make this side a little darker, a little more value. Bring it down this way. Pick up all magenta. Too much magenta. But we will just feather it out here. Well, the thing with painting white on white is you have to leave the white paper for the highlights and then try to make the shadows pull the image out if you can do that which is always a challenge you got to think negatively you have to think in reverse that's why this type of watercolor painting is a little bit tougher than oils where you actually can paint right over this if you want to put some highlights on you just come back and put some highlights on watercolors you have to paint around the highlights and kind of leave some of them out especially when you're doing a white on white type of painting here a water just give them a little light touch here maybe a little more blue in this on this side he's got a little more blue in his uh, this side hitting in some areas actually to make it look like these two are really sitting next to each other you want to have a little shadow from one hitting on the other um, actually that's what would happen however these are two independent photographs and I just kind of merged them together in a what one of my painter friends calls a Frankenstein composition where you take two different photographs and stick them together and make them one. They're not Frankensteins, but they're that's a term for. Okay, let me step back, take a look. His ears don't have any dark in them yet. And so we'll get our a bit of our burnt dark sienna here. We'll add some neutral tint to it to get it a little darker. See what we can do up in here. And a little dark in some spots. almost too dark but let's see how it blends out when it dries off a little bit I see a little magenta in there pick up some more dark here clear water if we can and blend together with the fur around his ear same over here don't make these straight lines you make them look too uh, perfect you want to have the impression of that fur hanging in over there okay bit of value here. Too much, of course. Seems to always get it too dark. Clear water, lighten it up, pick it up, blend it together. 
Now we'll put a little shadow of his ear. Okay. We need to have just a little more definition in some of these. Like in here we have some I'm going to show his beard in here. These actually flow out of his nose area here. Okay. Got a shadow down there. Trying to make it a little narrower. Okay, like that. A little more dark in here. Soften it up a little. I think this one on the left, I need to come back and do a little something here. This is too hard. It needs to be softened. Something like that, sort of move it out so it's not quite as hard of a edge. All right, that looks a little better. I just had a, I don't know if you remember that, but I had almost a hard edge going around there. It looked like a little halo or something. And I just wanted to smooth that out, sort of blend it together so that it wasn't so distinct. Need no more shadow on this side of his eye. Like this, it sort of runs down there. A little bit more shadow in here. Okay, let me see here. It's a little more definition in here. And it goes into some shadow, into the shadow below. Okay, now, I think I could keep messing with this a long time probably and I may do a little more after I shut the cameras off, but I'm going to see how this looks here. So to try to paint white on white, you have to put in some colors and some shadows and you have to be able to draw them out so people can see what you're painting here. There's a little bit of a shadow here under his ear, under his, I guess that is his ear. Make that shadow run down this way, connect with that. Okay, that helps that. And it's been on this other side the same way, probably. Pull up. Make it uh, show a few more places here. And clear water. All right. So you've seen this with only four colors, one brush, and I hope this has given you some encouragement to sort of try to do a pet. A pet. I 
I say, I've never tried this before until I tried this sample well, the other day. And I uh, thought it was kind of fun. Kind of came out decent. Put in some more things to sort of accent the what's underneath there. All right. I think I'm going to maybe just to sort of loosen it up, make it look a little looser than it is, is just sort of put a little bit of a light splatter, although I don't want to use that brush. I think I want to use this long. You don't have to do this splatter thing if you don't want. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm going to just try to put a little bit of texture on the bottom. There's not a lot going on down here. So I'm just throwing a few few things here to kind of loosen it up a little bit. My brush is, needs to have more paint in it, I think. A little bit loose, a lot of water, a lot of paint. Let's throw a few spots on there, and there we go. All right. What else can I do here, I think? Maybe a few more. You probably can't even see what I'm doing here on the camera. I'm just sort of putting in a few more things that look like some dark lines to highlight their mustache around here, around their nose and that sort of thing fine rigor work. All right. And I always like to put my name in a block print here. Left over from my days when I was a college computer nerd. Okay. All right. Let's see what it looks like with a little bit of a mat around it. Too bad there. Um, I can maybe zoom my camera in a little bit and let you see some of the details here. I have uh, have a couple control boxes here that let me move the camera around from a distance. So I'll let you look at Barkley up close, and let's pan over to. Cody. Down a little bit. There you go. Okay, let's see here. Be centered. Take the mat off. And I will zoom back and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you give a give this a try. Try to do one of your pets and see how you like it. They're a little bit of a challenge, particularly white on white. And uh, let me know how you do. Follow up and uh, leave me some comments and uh, ask me some questions. I'll try to answer you. Watch some of my other videos. If you haven't watched the Cecil the Lion uh, video, take a look at it. I have a playlist of watercolors, a playlist of oil paintings, and you can go through all of them. I have about 58 or 59 paintings out there now, videos on YouTube. And uh, be glad to have you as a subscriber. If you're not, <clears throat> please subscribe. There'll be links on here. Uh, check my website out. All of my paintings are listed on my website. You can see all the, all the video demonstrations free. So uh, until I see you again, uh, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.